morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Let's proceed. You and me a couple of days? Yes. Hey, that's great, man. Big deal. Yeah, I think it's good. Why? Because I ain't had no visitors in over three months. Yeah, man, what's that? You can maybe get a few bucks from it. Hey, Tony, Tony. All right, all right, all right. Let's knock it off. Now, come on, come on. Move away. No, you're in trouble already. You don't want to make it any worse, do you? Okay? Hey, man, what'd you do? What are you so nosy for? It's in your business. I thought there was something smoking yesterday. Was you? How could I have been smoking? I was in your room playing cards. That ain't true. It could be, though. No? Chucky, what's wrong with you? Can't be true, because I don't know how to play cards, and I wouldn't if I could. Don't worry about it, Pokey. We'll cover for you. Thanks. to begin to be stout-hearted men, and I'll say it over and over again, that my boys are simply good boys. I'd like to see my son, Tommy Morton. Visiting room? Yeah. Tommy Morton to the visitor's room. Hey, when you see your old man, get some money for the candy machine. Well, what's wrong with that? Chuck. 
Chunky, you're about the uncoolest dude I ever seen. How are you doing, son? It's fine, Dad. Last night, me and some of the guys went out. We had a few beers at the corner bar. We met some girls. We didn't get in until about five this morning. Okay, so it was a bad question. Your mother couldn't make it. She's retiring next week. And she has a lot to do at the school before the new vice principal takes over. Oh. Well, how's your health been? You really care? I worry about you all the time. Then how come I'm in here? You're in here because the judge put you here. No, I'm in here because you wouldn't vouch for me in court. It was the fifth time you were in court in the last five months. I vouched for you every damn time. And all you did was turn around and get in trouble again. You don't care about anybody. No, I never understood before. Look, I understand now what... You said you understood the last time you were here. Your mother and I decided it might be a good idea for you to stay a while. My mother? My mother, huh? Thanks for nothing. I guess now that she's retiring, you can go off and go on vacation, huh? No. Well, why not? You haven't got me to worry about anymore. I'm not in your way. I would like to help. If only there was some logical way. Help? This is what you call helping me. I don't want it. I'd like to help you, like you're hurting me. Bye, Tommy. Got any loot from your old man? No, we didn't get around to it. You know, I swear if I had a gun, I might have used it. Hey, man, you're talking about your father. Yeah, maybe so. But I'd still like to nail him so good it'd hurt him forever. What's it gonna take for him to really look at me just once? Did you hear what Priscilla said? She's getting straight A's in chemistry. Oh, uh -huh. Is that all you have to say? Very nice, Priscilla. Thank you, Mr. Martin. But you make me so angry. You don't care about anybody but yourself. I said very nice. Enough. It's a whole lot better than that son of yours ever did. Tommy is your son too, Bess. If you spent half the amount of time with him that you do with her, he'd be okay. Excuse me, but I'll jump out here. I have to meet my mother at the shopping center. Goodbye, darling. Bye, thank you. Why in God's name did you have to say all of that in front of her? Value report on the riot? It was not a riot. Don't tell me. I was almost knocked down. Why don't you mind your own damn business? 
Somebody has got to discipline these little bastards. There's not one bad kid in the whole bunch. Listen to him. Now he's a psychologist. <laughs> he's a gum? Oh, no, thanks. It's the wax, silly. <sighs> okay, the best I can make out is the back fence. It's clear between 9 and 9.30. Once outside the wall, they can't see you at the fence. I'll be waiting with the car at 9, but I have to drive away before 9.30. Well, why? Because that's when the black and white goes by. Well, you sure did a lot of research, Pussy. Thanks. I'll have everything else we need with me. I'll leave a wristwatch with the guard. Okay? Okay, gentlemen, pay attention. You're going to be coming out in a few minutes for lunch. You come out with a T-shirt tucked in. You stand by the door, face the office, and keep quiet. When you're done, you'll be dismissed two at a time. Make your head call and return to your room. Have a nice meal. All right, now this is the deal. Saturday at 9 a.m., we're going to go. Right, now we have to be back by the 2.30 check. I want Tony and Chunky to get the key. Now here, you're going to have to chew that to keep it soft. Golly, man, I can't do that. You had it in your mouth. Christ, we ain't even started yet, and you're going to give me trouble? Gee Liz, I can steal almost anything. Can I help it if I have a weak stomach? Yeah, they hurt you up inside your nuts. Tony, convince him it's the right thing to do. Okay, okay. All right, then. Okay, now, Pokey, you're going to be the alibi, all right? Ah. Oh, hey, hold it. Listen, you know you're not supposed to run. Yeah, 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 but they're going to choose up sides of the ball game, and I got to hurry. Okay, okay, go ahead. You know, you're one of the best kids around here. Gee, thanks. Bye. Yes? Don't just sit in there and say, yeah. Come in and speak to me. You know I'm busy. A mo, a mas, a mat, a mamas, a matis, a mat. What is it, Bess? It's just not polite to walk in and speak before you find out if anybody else is speaking. Excuse me. Now, what was it you wanted? Prissy would like to borrow your car Saturday. She's going to see the counselor at UCLA. If you're not busy. Not busy? What kind of a question is that? She can take you to the garage and pick you up. Thank you, Beth. I thought you said we're fit. Hey, Will, just hold on. Come on, let's go. Plan two, right away. What's plan two? Come on, I'll show you. All right, here, go buy me a candy bar. Okay. All right, you know what the deal is. Right. too hot and I'm letting it cool off for a while. I'll tell you what, I'll go get you some water. There's a station about a mile down here. No, it's okay. Don't bother. Oh, no bother. I'll be right back. Nosy jerk. Yeah. <laughs> 
You say he just fainted? Yeah, he didn't eat for about three days. He's on a diet. Three days? I would have heard about that. Well, he did eat, he did eat a little bit, you know, but... Oh, foolish. Just plain foolish. I'll have to report this to the office. He has to eat. I'll get in touch with the camp director myself. I'll make sure that he eats. What? What'd you do? Well, you just fainted, son, from hunger. Here, eat this before you fall over again. Go ahead, son, eat it. It'll give you a little sugar. Report to the dispensary tomorrow. Now, one thing we've got to be sure about is that he gets some rest. Well, don't worry about it, Harry. I'll take care of the whole thing. It's all right. Okay. I need it up. Two beats, man. That's all. I told you I should use the ball back the first time. Just get his keys. Come on, let's get him out of here. Christ, why don't you just send up a flare? It's open! Come on!
here. You shut your mouth. It should stop within 300 feet of this spot. The front tire is smoking. Might be a loose brake band. I'm going to stop and check. Someone shove a sock in his mouth. Can't see a thing. out there. It looks like he's making his heart. All right, now, Tony. Excuse me, sir. Look, new plan. We're going to take one of the guards hostage, and that way we can make the other two do whatever we want. They'll identify us. No, they won't. Here, I brought the rope along. We can tie our carcass across the walls inside. And there's already a partition in the front, so the driver won't be able to see us. Now, do you have any pins on you? We need safety pins. I have some clothes pins in my car. All right, quick, go back and get them. You two guys, help me drag the guards back inside. Tell him to hold his breath while he's taking out the smoker. Why do you guys keep conking me out? Come on, Chunky, off with the jacket. Why? I like it. Come on. Is anybody going to tell me why we're hiding in this truck? Why? Well, the sitter at the joint. Okay, Chunky, I'll tell you. We're in the truck because there's no money. No money? Uh. So we're going to the stores and pick up money. That ain't gonna work. Why not? Because nobody's gonna turn their money over to no kids. Just give me a hand, Chunky, and you'll see. Well, okay. Wait a minute. You ain't figuring on me going into the money, are you? No. Just a little help, that's all. Where are we gonna eat lunch? Do what? Eat lunch. We ain't. If, if we ain't eating... You would. Uh, I'm helping, I'm helping. Chrissy, what happens when they reach the lunch stop? They don't. I watch them eat. It take exactly 30 minutes by parking in the shopping center. I'll finish. Here you go. Wake him up. Turn your head. Right, go sit in your seat. 
Alright, Mac, now don't move and I'll explain your problem. We're all cozy together here in the back of your truck. You're gonna drive around all your normal stops, and the man in the back is gonna go out and pick up the money. And you're not gonna do anything foolish, is that clear? Right, now there's two other lives at stake besides yours. So don't be a hero. Now sit up and let's get this thing moving. And don't forget, right behind you the whole time. So if you don't want your friends to get hurt, you'll play it smart. like a movie, huh? Tie him up and blindfold him. Up front. All right, guard. Now we're coming to the stop. You're gonna go inside and pick up the money just like you do every day. And if you say a word, or if anybody gets wise, your two friends aren't gonna make it through the day. It's an empty gun. It'll keep you safe. <laughs> You're late. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we had a problem with one of the brakes grabbing and overheating. Do you need someone to take a look at it? Oh, no, it's uh, fine now. Thanks. something else? Uh, yeah. No, that's fine. Thanks. Have a good day. Sure, thanks. What do you think? I think he's bluffing. Yeah, well, I think he's too darn honest to bluff. Uh, Hold it. Yes? Just what's that supposed to mean? Whatever it sounded like and keep your hands off me. Are you saying he's a liar? He's rotten and he treats your mother like a piece of junk. Yeah, well, she is a piece of junk. She's the lowest. Hey. I don't know where this truck is going to stop. Just a couple more blocks and we're at the next stop.
We've got company. Who's that? Their security. What do you want me to do now? Wave at him. I have to report in or we'll be stopped. Do it, but be careful. 732 time check. We're 621, this is headquarters. You're 20 minutes overdue. Report to the captain when you come in. Headquarters clear. They don't like procedure breaks. Stop. All right, guard, this is the next stop. Go on out. Don't make any mistakes. Hey, you two guys. If we're going to make it, we have to keep our shit together. Because it's a long trip to the big house if we lose. What do you say? Are we going to work it out or quit? Let's shake hands. I'm sorry, Tommy. It's all right, no problem. This is a lunch stop. What's that? All right, now tell them to eat their lunch as usual. Eat your lunch as usual. I'm not hungry. Every 10. You can eat your lunch if you want. No, thanks. Hey, ask him if I can have it. Boy, you better sit your fat ass back down. It's security. I'll have to get out. Hold it a second. What should I do? Well, they can't come in. Don't forget your friend. He'll have to let me back in. Here's a gun. Hi, Dan. What's up? That's my question. <laughs> You'll have to explain. Quick, everybody down. What the hell are you up to? So I was 20 minutes late for check-in. It was the first time for everything. I don't like broken procedure. Well, damn it, get off my case. I won't have time to finish lunch. You're kind of uptight, aren't you? I don't believe you. But you better believe me when I say that you are under surveillance. We won't be far away. They're moving around the back. Finger on it. Walk to the front, looking at the wall. Don't be dumb and identify us. I won't look. You 
okay? That son of a bitch thinks he's smart, but he's got me on his ass. Ask the driver if that car is following. Tell me if that car follows. Okay. That's all. I think I changed my mind. I don't want to do this no more. Right, now, how many more blocks is it before we make the next turn? We're here, so it's eight more blocks. All right, now, if they follow us after that, we've definitely got a problem. After the next stop, we're close to our car. We can make it the last pickup. All right, I want you to go up front and tell that driver after the next pickup to run a yellow light that the tail can't follow. All right, but he's got to make it look right, otherwise he's going to get it. Right. He's acting kind of funny. He hasn't done anything different except not call in once. Uh, he's this smart-ass type. I've been waiting for him to step out of line. that I don't like being followed by people, not even you. Okay. There was nothing different in there. Let's go.
think they turned two blocks up. I saw it. Emergency. Armored car in trouble. Put him out. Look, it doesn't matter anyway. Let's go. All right, now we got 30 minutes to make it back before the afternoon check. 
We can make it. Oh, they're gonna come, ain't they? That's real bright, Chunky. First you go and wreck the battery, and then... How's that my fault? Well, the light stays on when the door is open. Let's jump and push. I don't know how to start it that way. I do. You push. Keep it running. Move over. I want to drive. Move over. I got a right to drive. You drove here. Come on, Prissy, let him drive. Just get in. Take it easy, guy. <laughs> the gas, man. Enjoy. Turn up the dirt road. Get up, damn it. You can just make it.
Well, you can see how it looks to an outsider. No, I can't. You could have given Dan a clue that you had a problem. I couldn't endanger the lives of my two men inside. You could have changed your route and we would have known. Just what are you saying, Inspector? There are any number of ways you could have helped us, but you didn't. You spent the whole day with a gang of criminals and you can't give a description. You actually went out of your way to hide facts from qualified police help that was readily available. Wouldn't you say something smelled strange? Inspector, I'm a calm man by nature. Now, unless you want to slap me into a jail cell right now, you better change your attitude. If it disturbs you that much, I must have hit close to home. Hold it. Sit down. Sit down! I smelled a rat on this job right from the start. All right, let's... let's go back right to the beginning. Now, whoever planted this smoke bomb did it before 11 o'clock. What was your stop before then? Cagle's Grocery. All right. What happened there? Nothing. You mean nobody came near the truck? Well, the usual customers uh, could have been anyone. No. Wrong. You see, the mud was scraped off underneath the fender. Did anybody bump the truck? Yeah, yeah, a kid on a skateboard. They like to slap the truck as they go by to get attention. Well, how old was the kid? Oh... 13, 14, curly hair, black. I only saw him for a second. It's marvelous. Are you aware that you are paid not only to drive, but to observe? Don't tell me how to do my goddamn job. Evidently, somebody should. You've just been wrong. Maybe. Felony assault on a police officer. Come on. Hold it. Have him wait out in the hall a minute. Come here. Look, I know you're pissed, but this is just gonna slow us up. I can't let every goddamn crook that comes through here take a free shot at me. What is more important, this case or your lousy pride? Who the hell do you think you are talking to me like that? Let, let's take a breather. I don't like the guy any more than you do. But I've got to have a way to go with him. Give me a break. All right, I'll defer charges for now. But he's going to do time for slugging me. Innocent or not. Well, you finally did it, you idiot. You're spread all over the front page. I've had about all I can take for one day. You've had all you can take. Why can't you think of me sometimes? The phone's been ringing off the hook. Stop it, Bess. Don't you dare interrupt me when I'm speaking. 
I've given you the very best years of my life, and I won't be treated this way. Can it? What did you say? Can it? Can it? Can it? I just came over to see if I could help. I know what you must be going through. Oh, you have no idea, darling. I was just about to talk to Mr. Morton about getting a divorce. That's the only good news they've had all day. Where are you going? Do you care? I may need the car. Really? for all you people out there in corral country with Wild Bill Williams reporting. Yesterday, in a daring daylight holdup, an armored car was robbed of $50,000. Guards were rendered unconscious by sleeping gas, and then the driver... Robbed his own goddamn truck. That's hard to believe that. Only that I can tell you right now, I'm going to find out the truth. Would you rather ride in my car? We could talk. What's the matter with you? He made you in a new car. I'll get out here. I have a light, Willie. You have a light? You Miller's got... here. <clears throat> you have what? Miller's. Miller. When you guys can get old enough to drink whiskey. Boy, you don't make enough money selling beer. No, we don't. <laughs> Tell me, what really makes sense to you? Well, first, I think I know the leader of the gang. I mean, I don't know his name, but I think it's someone I know. What makes you say that? His voice. He was talking naturally, but then all of a sudden he changed. Like he felt that I might recognize his voice. And then he didn't speak anymore? No. Why didn't you tell the police about it? I didn't think of it till just now. Did anybody else change their voice? No. The guy who did most of the talking didn't change his. But at one point, he started humming some sort of tune and snapping his fingers in a kind of a rhythm. If I heard his voice, I'd recognize it. There's a chunk in the office asking some questions. About what? About where he got out of the change to buy candy bars. Well, Chunky always buys candy bars. Yeah, but man, he don't got the whole machine. Now the other dudes are complaining. The fuzz found a whole drawer full of candy bars in the shakedown of his room. You think he'll tell? <laughs> Not today, Jack. Why not? Because he's too sick when trying to show the evidence. You know they were thinking about using a stomach pump on him? Look, you better get a hold of that fat tub of lard and tell him if he doesn't keep his mouth shut, I'll shut it for him. Oh, by the way, the word's out that Joe Mann's been laid out until they find out what's going down the money thing. Yeah, I heard. You said that's what you wanted, remember? Yeah, I did. you been doing all day? You certainly have your nerve leaving me here without a car. Oh, uh, 
I want you to know I'm going to call your son about our divorce. Now, why do you have to do that? He's got enough problems of his own. He has a right to know his father is so worthless he can't keep a job. I'm sure he knows that already. It's not the most well-guarded secret in town. He can come and live with me. He'll get a better life than you've ever given him. He doesn't want to live with you. He hates you. How can you say that? You're the one he hates. You're the only one that ever hurt him. You hated that child ever since you were pregnant. You should have gone through with your plans for an abortion. Shut up! It's funny. I never realized what pain it must have been for you living with a child you never learned to love. I'm going for a walk. Mrs. Morton? Yes? Uh, Dan Montgomery, securities investigation. We'd like to talk to you for a few minutes. All right, come in, but I'm busy in the garden. Mind if we sit? Oh. Mrs. Morton, may I ask you for your undivided attention, please? All right. These are just routine investigation questions. For instance, have you noticed anybody strange in the neighborhood recently? No. Why? Well, it's possible that your husband was under surveillance prior to the robbery. I didn't see anybody. You know, I didn't notice two cars in the driveway. Uh, don't you have a car? It's in the shop. Oh, I thought you worked. Well, I retired last week. Bert's been taking me to work and picking me up. And on weekends? Oh, that's the difficulty. Um, Bert takes his car on Saturday. So I'm stuck here in the house all day. Have you two been getting along all right? What kind of question is that? <laughs> Dissension in the home sometimes motivates a man to do strange things. Nothing motivates Bert. Well, thank you, Mrs. Morton. I hope we don't have to bother you anymore. We'll find the door. Camp Giuseppe Detention Center. Well, this is Bert Morton. I'd like to see my son today. I'm afraid visiting hours are over. Well, I fully understand that, but this is in regard to a family crisis. I hardly know where to start. I'm sure you've already heard about the robbery. Your mother wants a divorce. Figures. Oh, I've never really been fair to her. She's probably right. I was tied up in my own work. Well, now that's over. You'll be able to get your job back, won't you? No, oh, I don't think so. I have a felony hanging over my head. The bonding company won't bond anyone with a felony conviction. Well, maybe you won't be convicted. Yes, I will. I did it in front of witnesses. I struck a police officer. Oh. 
Yeah. My great perfect father in jail. <laughs> That's swell. How about one of your favorite lectures on respect for authority now, huh? I still believe that. Oh, tell it to the judge. You'll probably get time for aiding and abetting the criminals that robbed you. My role was totally innocent. You never yelled cop. That makes you a crook. Ask anyone in this joint. I was protecting others. Say that again. What? About not yelling cop. Why? How would you know about that? Rumors spread it. That hasn't been released yet. If you've heard something, you tell me. That hurts. Tell me. Look, this one is your problem, not mine. Why don't you just go away and leave me alone? Chose a lonely spot. Well, I feel like that. You know, I was thinking on the way up here, it's, it's hard to believe. If I wasn't convinced, do you think I'd hang a thing like this on my own son? No, I suppose not. But even if it is true, it's still a very tough problem. Well, we have to find a way. Now, this whole thing has practically no clue, but I still have an edge. How's that? The well, kids are lousy liars. They do an awful lot of it, but not very well. It takes years and years to become real liars, like us. <laughs> I'd like to know which boys he pals around with, and a little bit about each one. Surely. Uh, let's have Harry come in. He works a lot with the boys. I just sort of see them when they're in trouble. Have Harry Klinger come in. Yes, sir. And normally, you need a court order to question the boys. You realize any information you receive cannot be used as evidence. Thank you. I appreciate that. Come in. Have a seat, Harry. Thank you. Uh, this is Dan Montgomery, Armored Security Investigations. He thinks some of our boys might be involved in a recent armored car robbery. Golly, I don't know how that could be. Uh, they're counted every day and night. Let's just assume that some of them were involved. Have you noticed anything strange around here recently, like last Saturday? Uh, Saturday? I think it'll be easier for Harry to talk with me out of the room. He doesn't like to carry tales. It helps him control the boys. They know he's not a stoolie. defending these kids? Well, they have enough problems. Told you my old man wouldn't let it go easy. Well, who is this guy anyway? I don't know, but they got Harry in there asking him a lot of questions. You ain't got to worry. I got you covered. Like I told you, you were all working with me on the boat. Yeah, but what do I know about making some old boat? It couldn't be better. The place is empty all day. I locked the door from the inside. I don't think you want to get involved in a cover-up. These kids are in trouble, and it's their problem. Well, it's easy enough for you to talk like that. You've never served time. Have you? I didn't see a file on you. What are we in for? Oh, come on, come on, tell me. I'll find out one way or another. Uh, 
I shot my father when he beat up mom. I was 10. How long were you in? Till I was 18. Well, okay, you had your troubles. But these kids are all different, some good, some bad. There's only one thing they have in common. They cannot cope with society. And no matter how you think about it, they are wrong. You're right. And the kids are wrong. That's what everybody says to them. You're wrong. Police, the narcs, the juvies, the nuns, the whole goddamn world is right, and the kids are wrong. What well, don't you care about them? They are people. You're wrong, Harry. That's not right, Harry. Can't you do anything right, Harry? Are you stupid, Harry? Where's your brain, Harry? Mommy and Daddy know what's right, Harry, because their Mommy and Daddy knew what's right. Well, maybe we just ought to ask the kids what's right and wrong. I mean, maybe they would surprise all of us. My boys, my boys are good boys. Good boys. They just need a good father to help them. But my boys are good. I'd, uh, I'd like to see Tommy, Tony, Chunky, and Pokey. Thomas Martin, Tony Blazer, Ronald O'Malley, and Patrick Schoenbach report to the control center. All right, this is it, fellas. I'll stick to the story, all right? So I'll leave you to your little talk. Thanks. Why don't you boys sit down? about that. Uh, tell me, do I look to you like a real straightforward guy? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Now, would you lie to me? No. Mm -mm. Well, that's, <laughs> that's kind of hard to believe, you know. Most people would lie if they find a, a good enough excuse. You really wouldn't lie to me, huh? No, no sir. sir. That's funny. Because <laughs> I would lie to you. Well, okay. Mr. Thornton, your uh, administrator, works for me. I work downtown at the head office, and he works out here. Uh... Now, Patrick, I am told that you were seen smoking. Arnold, you stole some money from Tommy here. Uh, one of the guards was tied up in the closet, and Tony here was accused of that. So, there are a few more items on my list, but uh, this certainly proves that we do have a problem. Well, maybe hobbies would be better. Uh, Tommy, do you enjoy working on cars? Yeah, kind of. And Arnold? Oh, yeah. Doesn't anybody call you Arnold? No. Well, Arnold, uh, how about you? What would you like for a hobby? I can't do nothing. How about cars? Nope. How about cards? Nope. 
Woodworking? Nope. All right, all right. You think it over. We'll get back to you. Patrick, I have in my report that you may be winning the Crafts Awards this year with your boat. Yeah, they want me to enter it. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Of course, you, you realize that if any one of the supervisors or, or anybody helps you with it, you'll liable to be disqualified. Ain't nobody else touched it. All right, just as long as you understand that. Uh, Tony, I understand your hobby is baseball. Sure is. I found out that you're betting over 400 in the Saturday League. Ooh. Yep. How'd you do last Saturday? Good. You know, it says here that no one saw you play Saturday. Uh, yeah, that's right. I was helping Pokey on his boat. You weren't neither. I built it myself. Mm, well, we seem to have a disagreement. Uh, I was just watching him. Oh. Well, we were all just watching him. It was Chunky and Tony and myself. You too, Arnold? Yeah. Can you explain to me what this boat looks like? Well, I don't know too much about boats. Well, I mean, uh, does it have a motor or a sail? Yeah. Which is it? A sail. Thank you, Patrick. Now, uh, tell me, how long is the boat? Arnold, you tell me. Well, big. Is it big enough to get into? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, man. It's just a model boat. Well, how was I supposed to know? You never told me nothing about it. So, you weren't with Tommy and Tony, hmm? No. Why did you tie Harry up? I didn't. Then where were you, playing cards? I told you, I don't play cards. You played cards with me the other day, dummy. Oh, uh, I forgot. And I thought you boys said you weren't gonna lie to me. I really feel bad because of your lying to me. Arnold, you stand up. You want to know how much trouble you are in? Number one, supplying an alibi for Patrick Smokey. Number two, stealing money from Tommy. Number three, attacking an institute guard with an intent to commit bodily harm. Number four, lying to an official. Yeah. I'm afraid you're going to have to go up in front of the judge again. Measures will be taken, I can assure you that. You fellas can go to your room. Chunky, I brought your jacket back. Gee, thanks. Hey, how do you... Oh. Come on, go to your rooms. We'll call you. First of all, the man you were talking to is with Security Investigations. He has you kids cold. He knows who's involved and can prove it. There's no way out. Now, please trust me this one time. I know the difference now between doing a job and believing in what you're doing. I've been your father in name only. I've given you half the love and sincerity that I feel for you. And you responded naturally with half. Now, we may not always agree. Things may not always run smoothly, but I'll do my damnedest. We can make a team that can't be beaten. Prissy's got the money. It doesn't do you any good to deny it, Priscilla. 
I have all the details. You may be the only one who knows where the money is, but when the police get through with you, you'll tell them. It would be impossible to prove I had anything to do with this. Just sit down, young lady. Now, you take my word for it. I can prove it. Now, if you turn in the money and you all confess, it'll go much easier with all of you. Can Mrs. Morton take me to get the money alone? Yes. Okay. Let's go. Mrs. Morton? Yes, Chrissy, I'm in here. Hello, Prissy. Hi. Could you drive me someplace, Baz? Well, darling, um, you can have the car if you wish. I'd like it if you'd go with me. Of course. to get the money. He's wise to the whole scam. Hmm? He doesn't know about you, and I sure won't tell. Well, forget about him, darling. We'll just leave now. Yeah. Uh, did you bring a passport? Yes. Good. Mm. And I've taken all the money from our savings. And all we have to do is pick up the other money and go. So what if we are leaving two weeks early? This could mean a lot of trouble for you. He'd never prosecute me. He's too spineless. I'd sure hate to see you arrested. Prissy will be in Europe before he seriously starts looking. <laughs> He'll still be asleep in his chair. I'll get the money and be right back, okay? Yes, it is. There's no parking here. I'm not parking. Looks like you are to me. Please, don't get smart with me. Your driver's license, please. This is your current address? Yes. Yes, it is. Your license expires in three days. Please, write the ticket and leave me be. Could create problems if you don't get it renewed on time. Yeah, but... Officer, you won't have to wait for your accomplice any longer. We picked her up. She was already leaving in the airport bus. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. Remember that conversation we had... My husband always uses a car on Saturdays. You knew your husband didn't have the car, and you did not tell me. Have a look. teach you how to drink, little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, my boys are good boys. A chance to begin to be stout-hearted men. And I'll say it over and over again that my boys are simply good boys.